Hi everyone, in the last lecture I explained you what is jaundice, where do you look for jaundice, what are the causes of jaundice and I introduced to what are the different types of jaundice. In this class, I will explain you the different features of different types of jaundice and also the laboratory investigating findings of jaundice. Now let us understand some of the features in these three types of jaundices, hemolytic jaundice, hepatocellular jaundice and obstructive jaundice. The first is what type of serum bilirubin levels that is increased. In case of hemolytic jaundice, the increased serum bilirubin levels are unconjugated because they are not entering the liver and they are not getting conjugated when they are in excess formed. In case of hepatocellular, what type of uh, bilirubins are increased whether it is conjugated or unconjugated? It is tricky here. So, in case of liver damage, the conjugation is not happening. So, unconjugated bilirubin levels must be in increased and also if there is liver damage affecting the blockage of the canalicular or impairment in the hepatic excretion of the conjugated bilirubin even the conjugated bilirubin in the blood will also be increased. So, it can be increase of both unconjugated and conjugated. So, in case of decreased hepatic uptake or decreased conjugation, there will be unconjugated hyperbilirubinemia. If there is decrease in the hepatic reuptake and decrease in the hepatic excretion of conjugated bilirubin, there is conjugated bilirubinemia. Now, in case of obstructive jaundice, it is very simple. There is obstruction to the bile flow. The conjugation has happened normally within the normal liver hepatocytes and this conjugated bilirubin levels are increased. It is increase in the conjugated bilirubin levels. Now, let us see the urobilinogen levels UBG formed. So, in case of hemolytic prehepatic jaundice, there is increased bilirubin production and this excess of unconjugated bilirubin is also reaching the liver and liver is functioning more and more and more and more conjugated bilirubin is formed and that more and more conjugated bilirubin is reaching the intestine and more and more conjugated bilirubin is converted by the intestinal bacterial flora into more and more urobilinogens. So, the urobilinogens levels are increased in case of hemolytic or prehepatic jaundice. In case of hepatocellular or in case of obstructive jaundice, what happens? There is impairment in conjugation process. So, the conjugated bilirubin excreted into the bile is less. So, when there is decreased conjugated bilirubin reaching the bile and reaching the intestine, the urobilinogen formation is also reduced. So, here it can be reduced. If there is complete abstraction, it can be either reduced or even absence of urobilinogen formation. So, no conjugated bilirubin reaching the intestine, if there is a complete block, so urobilinogen formation is completely absent, no urobilinogens. Next is Vandenberg test. So, this is a biochemical test, Vandenberg test that is done to differentiate between whether the bilirubin in increased is conjugated or unconjugated or both. This Vandenberg test is indirect positive in case of unconjugated hyperbilirubinemia. In case of conjugated bilirubinemia, it is direct positive and in case of both increased unconjugated and conjugated, it is biphasic response. I have made a separate video on this Vandenberg test. You can just have a look into that and you can understand what is direct positive, what is indirect positive and what is biphasic reaction. Next is liver function test. So, when you do the liver function test like liver enzyme assays, the alanine transaminase, aspartate transaminase, alkaline phosphatase, what are the variations you find in these three types of jaundice? In case of hemolytic jaundice, liver function test will be normal, absolutely normal because the liver is functioning normally, the liver is healthy. In case of hepatocellular jaundice, there is damage to the hepatocytes. So, when there is damage to the hepatocytes, there is increase in alanine transaminase, increase in aspartate transaminase and also some levels of increase can happen in case of alkaline phosphatase, but it can be even normal. 
So why there is increase in these two transaminases in case of hepatocellular damage? See, consider this is a liver cell, and these are cytosolic enzymes, the enzymes present in the cytoplasm, and if at all if the cell membrane is broken down if in during hepatocellular damage the membrane is broken down these cytosolic enzymes will leak so where do they leak they leak into the liver sinusoids they leak into the liver sinusoids from the cytoplasm and they can enter into the systemic circulation so there was the blood levels of these two enzymes increases so in case of hepatocellular damage there will be elevated blood levels of alanine transaminase and aspartate transaminase What happens to LFT in case of obstructive jaundice? If there is a pure obstruction in the biliary canaliculi or in the extrahepatic without the cells damage, liver function test should be normal. Or if there is any overlapping between obstructive and hepatocellular, there can be slight impairment in the liver function test. But what happens to the alkaline phosphatase values? Alkaline phosphatase values in the blood will be very much high, very much high. What do you mean by this alkaline phosphatase? This is a glycoprotein. Alkaline phosphatase is a glycoprotein. I will write here. So consider this is a cell. This is a cell and the glycoprotein here is membrane bond. So this is the membrane bond glycoprotein. So this enzyme which is membrane bound is outside the cell. And usually this is excreted through the biliary canaliculi. It is excreted through the biliary canaliculi. And if there is any obstruction to the biliary canaliculi, what happens to the, if there is obstruction to the biliary canaliculi, what happens to this membrane bound alkaline phosphatase levels which are not excreted through the biliary canaliculi, they get accumulated and they can spill over into the systemic circulation. There can be increase in the blood levels of alkaline phosphatase if there is obstruction to the bile outflow. Now the next is what happens to the urine bilirubin level? The bile pigment, yellow pigment bilirubin, if it is unconjugated, it is always bound to plasma protein and it is not filtered through the glomerular membrane and it is not present in the urine. In case of unconjugated hyperbilirubinemia, the urine bilirubin is absent. In urine bilirubin, if it is present, that means definitely it is water soluble conjugated bilirubin. Here you can find urine bilirubin and also in case of obstructive jaundice, urine bilirubin will be present. So here it is negative, in these two it is positive, here more and more positive. So if there is more of bilirubin in the urine, the urine color will be dark brown. The patient can complain of passing urine which is tea colored or cola colored urine. The dark brown cola colored tea colored urine means there is presence of excess bilirubin in the urine and it can be either hepatocellular or obstructive jaundice. It is not the hemolytic jaundice. Now lastly, what happens to the stool fat content, the fecal fat content? The fats are absorbed from the intestine by the role of bile salts. The bile salts breaking down the fats into fatty acids and fatty acids are absorbed from the intestine. If there is absence of bile within the intestine, the fat absorption is impaired. So in case of obstructive jaundice, in case of obstructive jaundice, when there is no bile, no bile salts within the intestine, the fat absorption is impaired and there is more fat in the fecal content. So we call it as steatoria. So steatoria means increase in the fecal fat content. The stools will have more fat. That means the stool is very bulky because of the fat and it is foul smelling, greasy and clay colored. I hope you all understood what is jaundice, what is the cause of jaundice and what are the different types of jaundice. Where do you look for jaundice? Yes, I have a question for you. Why jaundice is first seen in sclera?
what is the reason for scleral icterus the first site for yellowish discoloration is sclera why do you have answer let me explain you the sclera is a connective tissue layer and this connective tissue will have more of collagen fibers and also elastic fibers these elastic fibers are made up of protein elastin and this elastin protein is having very high affinity for bilirubin that is the reason when there is increase in the blood bilirubin levels this bilirubin will be picked up and get binding to the elastin fibers or the elastin protein which is present in the sclera and the sclera turns into yellow color i have one more question for you can you name some inherent disorders that are associated with deficiency or absence of enzyme glucuronyl transferase uridine diphosphate glucuronyl transferase enzyme yes let me explain you this uridine diphosphate glucuronyl enzyme is present within the hepatocytes within the endoplasmic reticulum of the hepatocytes right so this is the microsomal enzyme present in the endoplasmic reticulum of the liver cells mainly involved in conjugation of bilirubin the deficiency or absence of this enzyme can be because of genetic mutations in the gene that is responsible for synthesis of this protein enzyme by transcription and translation process so genetic mutations of the gene can happen in case of two inherent disorders one is gilbert syndrome the second one is krigler najar syndrome gilbert syndrome is very common and it is a mild form whereas krigler najar is of two types type 1 and type 2 krigler najar type 1 is very severe and if at all there is increase in bilirubin levels more than 20 mg per deciliter because of impairment in the conjugation of bilirubin this excess of bilirubin can get deposited within the brain tissues and can result in kernicterus i hope you have heard of this kernicterus the brain gets damaged because of excess bilirubin levels and the person can die of kernicterus the krigler najar type 1 is seen in neonates the neonates may survive for few days and death is because of kernicterus or encephalopathy due to excess bilirubin level damaging the brain tissue basically basal ganglia and other tissues krigler najar type 2 is of mild variant there won't be total absence of enzyme but there will be deficiency of enzyme udp glucuronyl transferase for conjugating the bilirubin and unconjugated bilirubins are in excess in krigler najar type 2 so these are the hereditary disorders that are associated with deficiency or absence of udp glucuronyl transferase enzyme now let us wind up this session with some lab investigations and interpretations of what type of jaundice it is this is the lab report of 40 year female complained of pain abdomen nausea vomiting and also on examination yellowish discoloration of sclera skin was present on investigation total bilirubin is elevated direct bilirubin is elevated whereas indirect bilirubin is normal liver enzymes alt ast or slightly elevated whereas alkaline phosphatase is very much elevated vandenberg is direct positive that means conjugated hyperbilirubinemia so conjugated bilirubins are more in blood and also urine bilirubin is positive conjugated bilirubin water soluble present in urine urobilinogens are decreased so this suggests that there is some obstruction whether intrahepatic or extrahepatic to the bile flow alkaline phosphatase levels in the blood is extremely high so this is a type of post hepatic jaundice or obstructive jaundice the important findings here are conjugated bilirubin levels are increased alkaline phosphatase is elevated 
urine bilirubin is present whereas urobilinogen is decreased let us see the next report this report is of 18 year male complaining of easy fatigability and also yellowish discoloration of sclera skin his total bilirubin is elevated direct is normal whereas indirect bilirubin is elevated serum enzymes liver enzymes alt ast are normal alkaline phosphatase is also normal vandenberg test is indirect positive bilirubin in urine is negative urobilinogens are very much high increased so so what type of jaundice is this indirect bilirubin levels are more that is unconjugated hyperbilirubinemia conjugation is not happening so it can be because of increased rbc destruction liver enzymes are normal liver is normal and vandenberg test is indirect positive that is unconjugated bilirubin excess in the blood this is prehepatic jaundice or hemolytic jaundice the cause of hemolytic jaundice can be confirmed with peripheral smear examination hemoglobin levels examination ldh assay lactate dehydrogenase examination ldh will be elevated and also reticulocyte counts will be more in case of hemolytic jaundice so to conclude in hemolytic jaundice or prehepatic jaundice unconjugated bilirubin levels are increased vandenberg test is indirect positive and urine urobilinogens are more whereas liver function test is normal this is the investigation report of 45 year male complaining of pain abdomen nausea vomiting history of alcohol consumption yellowish discoloration of sclera mucous membrane on investigation total bilirubin is elevated direct bilirubin is also elevated indirect bilirubin is also elevated so both direct and indirect bilirubins are elevated liver enzymes alanine transaminase aspartate transaminase both are elevated you can see here aspartate transaminase is very much elevated compared to alanine transaminase alkaline phosphatase is normal there is no obstruction liver enzymes are elevated that means hepatocellular damage has happened so this is a type of hepatic jaundice hepatocellular jaundice where both conjugated and unconjugated bilirubins are elevated liver enzymes are elevated vandenberg test here will be biphasic and urine dipstick for bilirubin is positive because of presence of conjugated bilirubin passing through the glomerular membrane and present in the urine urobilinogens are reduced because of decrease in conjugation process so this is a reinvestigation report of hepatocellular jaundice this report is for self assessment please comment on the type of jaundice in the comment section this is a report where total bilirubin is elevated direct is elevated indirect is also elevated liver enzyme sgot that is aspartate transaminase is elevated whereas alkaline phosphatase is normal so please comment on type of jaundice yes thanks for watching this video i hope you understood i will meet you in next lecture thank you